The birthplace of the Star Spangled Banner will serve as one of the backdrops for next week's Republican National Convention. On Wednesday, according to a senior Trump campaign official, Vice President Mike Pence will address the convention from this historic site. The signs are everywhere. A caravan of big rigs for the broadcast, security sweeps on foot and in the air. Even so, no one from the White House, the National Park Service, the campaign, or the RNC would confirm on the record that the political event is actually happening, let alone confirm that it's allowed to happen under the Federal Hatch Act. When I see politicians try to capitalize on on, on the on the location of the of a historic shrine to make a political statement it just doesn't do anything for me uh, and i view it with some cynicism uh, instead of <laughs> instead of embracing it sharp criticism tonight from maryland's two democrats in the u.s senate in a statement senator chris van hollen said our national monuments where american soldiers fought and died are no place for trump politics and over the phone maryland's senior u.s senator ben cardin called on the campaign to reverse course the lack of, of leadership by this administration on uh, drawing a, a very blurry line between the use of official resources of this country for political purposes. But it's just wrong and it should be called out. And yes, I would hope that they would recognize that and change their behavior. But I think at this stage, uh, it's unlikely. They built quite an infrastructure inside the gates of Fort McHenry. Neighbors here have questions too, including will next week's events comply with Baltimore City's emergency coronavirus restrictions and how many people are invited? How many people will be attending? Right now in the city, indoor and outdoor gatherings are capped at 25 people. We have asked those questions of the Trump campaign and we are awaiting an answer. Reporting live tonight, I'm Kate Amara, WBAL TV 11 News. <laughs>